ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant General Willie Williams. Well, good evening. Well, well, I guess this is a wake, and uh, so I'll, but I'll say it again. Good evening. Hey, listen, I, I certainly hope that you all enjoyed your meal. Um, I certainly did. It was a wonderful meal, and we just uh, uh, thank you for, for, for joining us here this evening. This truly is a, a great event, and, uh, and on behalf of the Commandant of the Marine Corps, uh, what's going on over that table? But, uh, fly, okay, all right. But, uh, so on behalf of the Commandant of the Marine Corps, General uh, James Amos, it is truly my pleasure to participate in this year's Long Sailor Awards dinner. Now, the Commandant would want to be here, but as you heard earlier, um, you know, he's uh, where a lot of us wish we were, and that was, uh, is over in Afghanistan with our Marines. Uh, he's visiting with them and just having a wonderful time. But, but true to form, what did he do? Well, he ordered, uh, first he ordered his lovely bride, uh, Miss Bonnie, uh, to be here, and then he ordered my lovely bride, Miss Bobby, to be here. And of course, naturally, he said uh, I had to come along to uh, accompany them here. So it is our pleasure to be here and to represent uh, the Commandant of the Marine Corps. You know, this is a great event. It is a great event where we begin to, thank you, thank you. <laughs> you know, it's a great event where we get to pay tribute to just some outstanding veterans of our sea services. Uh, those who have worn the cloth of our nation in, in war, and in peace, and then afterwards have gone on to, to, greatness, to greatness in other arenas. Now, one of the ones who we're uh, honoree tonight is, uh, is Mr. Jerry Coleman. And, uh, and I'm here to pay tribute to Mr. Coleman uh, as we bring him up to introduce him to you. Now, his bio is in your program, uh, and you'll also be hearing, you heard some of it on the video already, so you'll be hearing more uh, on that video. But let me just tell you a few things that uh, maybe, you know, is not in the video or maybe you, you will not uh, see in the program. First of all, Mr. Coleman was bitten by the, uh, the Marine Corps bug uh, when, he was a, when he was a young lad. Uh, you saw it in the video when uh, Pearl Harbor was attacked in December of 41. Uh, he was too young to join. Um, and he recalled when he was a senior in high school uh, being called by the principal where he's gathered the senior, senior uh, guys there into the auditorium. And as he's uh, in there with all of them, all of a sudden in the back of the auditorium come these two naval uh, aviators. Now according to Jerry, he said their wings, the wings they wore looks about 15 feet wide and, and it was made of solid gold. I mean, that's what, that's his regulation of them. And that's how he, all of a sudden he became to, uh, wanted to be a, a naval aviator. Uh, he really was seduced by all those medals and ribbons and badges that they wore. And when you read all through his bio, you would see that, uh, you know, in, in 1951, uh, after the World Series, uh, you know, he, uh, he had been to, to war, he had been to active duty and come back, went to play some ball. And then he was, uh, he was out still playing ball. And then after the World Series, he was called by a, a superior officer there in Alameda, California. And uh, Jerry thought that they were just coming for a casual meeting and really, he was being recalled into active duty. Uh, you know, so he, all of a sudden now, he's been, uh, uh, you know, he's had the Marine Corps that has gotten him twice when, uh, when he didn't know it, even though he, he never had that happen to him on the, on the baseball field. But the Korean War was not, uh, it, it was anything but dull for Jerry when he was there. Um, he had two truly close calls uh, uh, with death. Uh, one is that, he, he was on a mission and his radio went out and he was forced to land his, uh, his Corsair attack bomber in heavy uh, cloud cover. And there was another crippled uh, aircraft that was also headed in the same direction that uh, Jerry was, was having. Apparently this other aircraft had flamed out over the runway at the same time that Jerry was trying to, trying to land his. But now this other one had more speed and you know how aviators are. He'd tell me that the others had more speed than him so he was able to the other one was able to come and get ahead of him and went in and landed just as, as, it, as it blew up, as it hit, hit the, hit the uh, runway. Uh, and then on another time, as he was, he was flying, his aircraft lost his engine just as he was taken off and he was loaded with 3,000 pounds of, of bombs on board. And, uh, 
And again, Jerry, he's thinking about how is he going to get out of this, that he just knew he was, he was, he was going to, he was going to uh, die and that he was going to crash this thing. But he thought to himself, he said, well, blunt bombs don't blow up unless they're armed. So his bomb was not, so he just jettisoned them there over the runway, and, uh, uh, and he was able to, to, to land, and, and for that, he's here with us, to, uh, us today. But, you know, um, you know, Jerry went on, as you all recall, as you look through his bio, you would see that in 2005, he, he celebrated his 33rd uh, season as the voice of the Padres, uh, and he was inducted into the National Baseball Hall of Fame uh, during that year as an announcer. Uh, now, I also grew up some time in San Diego, and I remember the voice of the San Diego Padres because I started my career out in San Diego, and I attended a number of Padre games. Now, I'll just have to tell you that I'm a, I'm a country boy uh, from the hills and fields of Alabama, and I really had a hard time understanding some of what uh, uh, Mr. Coleman was saying. When you look at some of what he's saying, I'm going, what in the world is he talking about? And I'll give you a couple of examples, and then I'll be done. But, for one, uh, I was attending this game, and I heard uh, Jerry say that a day without newspaper is like walking around without your pants on. Uh, you know, and then on another, I heard him, he said, uh, there are two heads to every coin. And, and really, and definitely one of my favorites, and, there, and this is, uh, was a true, and I, was, I, was, I think I was at this game, uh, and Jerry uh, is quoted as saying, there's a deep fly ball. Winfield goes back. His head hits the wall. It's rolling towards second base. <laughs> you know, I mean, in there I'm wondering, okay, but, you know, I've watched a lot of Dave Winfield. I've watched him play ball, and I thought he lost his head when he went to, to the Yankees, but... Uh, but I certainly didn't think he lost his head there. But, uh, but anyway, in, uh, in, in, and as you all know, in 2005, Mr. Coleman was also inducted in the Marine Corps Sports Hall, Hall of Fame, and, uh, and, uh, and we're certainly proud of that. Uh, nicknamed the Colonel, uh, he's the only Major League Baseball player to have seen combat in two wars. Only Ted Williams shared that distinction as serving as a Marine aviator in two wars, but Williams only saw combat in the Korean War. And as of November 2010, Mr. Coleman was the oldest active play-by-play -play announcer in baseball. And also in 2010, he is quoted as saying, quite honestly, the most important time of my life was the five years I spent in the Marine Corps. No question about it. He said, if you struck out in baseball, you came back and gave it another shot. If you struck out the Marine Corps, you're done. Mr. Coleman, truer words certainly have never been spoken, and we're sure glad that you never struck out in the Marine Corps or in the cockpit. And we're glad that you're here to celebrate your remarkable achievement on the baseball field as well as in the United States Marine. Video, please.